And that's what I'm talking about. You can't get fine eating like this at any of those diners out there. So make sure you enjoy it. Thanks, mister. Next time you get a hankering for old-time Creole food, just stop on by. Zach, it appears to be closed. Let's come back during business hours. Investigation coming, Mr. Special Agent.
My lord, you sure look pooped, honey. Hello, Alexis. Yes, someone did quite the number on me. Must have given you one heck of a shiner. Well, let me get you some coffee so you can relax, honey. Yes, that's it, Alexis. Just what I was waiting for. Would it be possible to get an especially pungent cup, smoldering with all the heat of the southern sun? Coming right up. <laughs> Zack, look. <laughs> Patty. No, Melvin. No. Lord, what are you trying to do? Wake the dead? What's wrong, honey? Where is this boathouse located? Oh, my Lord, what's going on with you? Your poor voice is positively trembling. Just tell me, where is this boathouse located? Uh, there's lots of boathouses around these parts, honey. Your guess is as good as mine. Well, then, can you at least tell me when this photo was taken? Looks to me like it was taken during the Clarks and Campbell wedding party, when PJ married his ex-wife, Audrey. There was a building this tall in town back then? Oh, you know what? That must be the cold storage warehouse. That big billboard on the roof is the Clarksons, see? I bet you'd be able to get a great view of all the boathouses in the swamp from up there. Thank you. That's all the info I need. Would you mind if I borrowed this? Shoot, of course not, honey. <laughs> Thanks for your help. And keep the change. <gasps> oh, my lord.
And that's what I you can so make Thanks, mister. Next time. chose a dragonfly for their family crest. In some European countries, dragonflies are called devil's needles, and folklore suggests that they fly around sewing up the mouths of children who don't do as they're told. In Japan, some samurai helmets are also shaped like dragonflies. There, dragonflies are seen as beneficial insects who march valiantly ahead, preying on the pests that devour crops. In other words, Dragonflies symbolize opposite things depending on whether you're in the east or the west. But why did the Clarksons choose this insect to be their symbol? I can't help but feel like it's something deeper than the cliched image of dragonflies as guardians of crops. Bingo called the dragonfly a flying serpent. One of his interpretations right on the mark. The Clarksons are serpentine. Savage, cunning, and skilled at protecting themselves. But they don't slither along the ground. They're serpents with wings that allow them to soar above the rest. But now, those wings are starting to fail. That's what really triggered this incident. After acquiring wings, the serpent attained prosperity and was crowned in glory. But now it's lost its power, wavering, moments away from plummeting back down to the earth. So it started lashing out against others, just like it used to do before it gained its wings. Sort of sounds like an ancient myth, doesn't it, Zach? I owe you an apology for how I was acting before. I think I get what you meant now. You'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power. Oh, those words woke me up. I need to get myself together or I'll sink. And you saved me. <laughs> so, uh, thanks. Now this is a surprise, Zack. Can a human being really turn themselves around this quickly? Hey, come on, don't say that. I was drunk, you know. I lost my baby girl, my wife, then my father-in-law. I, I didn't know what to do. Blaming it all on someone else was the only way I knew how to cope. All right? What are you here for, anyway? I thought you already investigated this place. I'd like to get your permission to climb up to the roof. Right up to that hideous sign there. Oh, is that all? 
Well, go on ahead. I know you're a genius agent. If you need to go up there, then by all means. Danny, I'm not a genius. I'm a complete failure. I never even gave a single thought to PJ Clarkson's first daughter. I was practically oblivious the entire time. I never considered the possibility that Lena had a child either. And that misstep cost us many sacrifices. But you know all about it now, right? Then just move on. You figured out that it was Galena who murdered Lise. And that Galena was being manipulated by Lena. You proved that my treasure wasn't evil after all. It may have cost us a lot of sacrifices, but that still makes you a genius agent. And that's how I know I can trust you. Now, I don't care if you're FBI. I'm still gonna come clean and say it. Whoever killed my treasure is gonna pay. I wanna track him down, then kill him with my own hands. But, I'm a Clarkson too. So I made up my mind. All Clarkson's got a job to do. Which one is it, Zack? Patricia must be in the boathouse we saw in that photograph. Along with Melvin and Candy, the goddess of fertility. What I saw at Alexis's restaurant. Not only was my mind still reeling, but the oracle was also rather vague. But so what, Zack? We just need to find the same boathouse that we saw in that picture. There's got to be another singularity inside it. Zack, that's the boathouse. It's right where the photograph was taken. But I have no idea how we're supposed to reach it. Zack? It looks like we have no choice but to head back to the starting line. Let's go and see... The one who fired the pistol at heaven. He should be able to transport us straight to that boathouse. Remember, his love for justice is so strong that he chased a poacher's boat all the way up the bayou. I'm sure he'll be happy to help us. Zack, stop and just imagine it for a moment. Chuck's face. Once he hears that poacher's boat is actually a shrine housing the goddess of fertility. <laughs> What's this? Who left this message for her? Zack, you know what? I forgot all about our ten-foot giant. We still have a lot of work left to do in this town. Zack, there's the biggest man we've seen in town thus far. Let's talk to him just in case. Hello there, Avery. I need your help. Would you mind raising your arms up high like this for me? Raise my arms? Like this? <clears throat> Thank you. That's perfect. It appears that, even with your height, you'd have a tough time reaching a spot up that high. I love Lise. Yep. <laughs> but Lise got cold. Lise turned white. But my, my Poor sunlight wouldn't move no more. 
Avery, I understand how you feel. I'm sure that Lise does too. Really? Oh yes. I guarantee it. Right now, I'm trying to eliminate the cause of her death. But I need your assistance. If you ever see a man who looks taller and stronger than you, I want you to let me know. I will. You bet I will. Yup. longer than we originally planned, haven't we? Oh no, I'm not complaining. I'm used to living at the hotel, and I love southern food. There are some inconveniences, though. There's no movie theater in this town, nor is there a video rental store, and the TV in the hotel room doesn't get any of the on-demand movie channels. We'll just have to get lucky and encounter a movie being shown on TV. The movie environment in Lucara is no different from that of the 70s, Zach. No, they don't have a movie theater. So I suppose it's even farther back than that. But it's true that these are the times in which one always encounters the best movies. It's always been that way, hasn't it? Think back with me. Remember that? Hello, Chuck. The time has finally come to catch that poacher's boat you spoke of. Oh, now he wants to catch the boat. Thought you FBI boys don't chase down boats. Ain't that what you said? Unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our country, right? You're exactly right, Chuck. I discovered that boat does contain perpetrators who are potentially capable of overthrowing our country. Perpetrators who are deeply connected to a new drug called San Rouge. And you expect me to help you? Yes, I need your help. <clears throat> I see you got the balls to match just how big a goddamn prick you are. Poachers can fuck with my form all they want. But the moment drugs get involved, all of a sudden you're raring to go. Guess what? I don't give a shit. I can't solve this case without your help, Chuck. If you're angry about how I acted earlier, then please allow me to apologize. I don't want no apology. Then how can I get you to trust me? You really don't know when to shut up. Do ya? <laughs> As you can see, I'm busy here. So if you're done harassing me, then, uh... Chuck, that was amazing. Absolutely incredible. Fantastic. How did you do that? Uh, thanks? I don't know. The answer lies in his physical advantage. That's it, Zack. Your stance when you toss makes all the difference. I can't get over how 
beautiful his stance was. Just what am I missing? You like skipping stones? You know, I always trust a man who knows how to skip good. See, the key to skipping is how close your arm is to the water when you throw. You also need accurate speed, an accurate wrist snap, and accurate timing when you let go. That's why short folk who stay low to the ground and keep a low profile like me can skip better. And that's how I reckon I can trust a man who knows what skipping's all about. Got it? If you want my help, you gotta impress me with your skipping. Then I'll lend you my boat. Damn, woo-wee! You're a natural. That was flawless skipping, all right. Really? Oh, yeah. You got talent, boy. And you're humble, too. Well, I did have a great teacher. That's what helped me to stay low. Yep, that's the key. Gotta keep low profile. Folks can learn a lot about life from stone skipping. Feller's gotta stay humble. Keep himself from getting all arrogant. Know what I mean? Okay, maestro, I trust you now. I'll take you into the swamp or wherever the hell else you want to go. Want to shove off now? Gotta make hay while the sun shines. Let's head over to my boat. Follow me, maestro. Zach, this is exhilarating. It's like an amusement park ride, only better. Hold on tight now, Maestro! This is yet another reminder about just how vast and varied our homeland of America is.
This is as far as I can take you. You're gonna have to walk, Mir. Thanks, Chuck. Hey, you hear that wind a-howling? That there's a storm coming. You better watch yourself out there, you hear? Oh, yeah. Some folks don't usually come round this end too much. So be careful. You got a weapon? Just give me a holler if you need me to come get you. I do always trust a good skipper from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate all your help. Zack, a deadly premonition. How do you feel about this one? Honestly, I'm torn. I know the truth that awaits us here isn't one we want to accept. But we have to keep marching ahead. We're FBI special agents, remember? The United States Department of Justice has authorized us to deliver justice in their name. You know, sometimes I get to thinking, why did I ever decide to work in the justice sector?
hurts. Don't. Ah, curse. Zack, we've reached the final stage. Are you prepared for the truth? do anything for you. I'll make your wish come true. Yes. You stand before the goddess. Mind your manners. Sorry, but I don't worship that deity. You always were a rude one. Patty, everything's all right now. Just come over to me. She can't hear you, York. Patricia's already in a trance. Outside voices can't reach her. You didn't. Saint Rouge? Now what kind of fool do you take me for? She's the consecrated virgin, and virgins need to be pure. She won't be able to serve the goddess if she gets all corrupted, now will she? And besides, she's got a resistance to the stuff. Might be due to the blood she inherited from her parents, or might be Saint Rouge was designed that way on purpose. Not that it matters now, cause she's about to die. I wouldn't do that if I were you, York. Or did you forget who gave you Mr. Alligator to begin with? You think I'd hand you a weapon without any sort of safeguard in it? This is straight out of a bad C movie, Melvin. 
Call it what you want, York. But I'm the main character here, and you already played your part. Now that Candy's become the goddess, I will take her once more and claim my seat as the king who rules this town. Yes, I will be the one who reveals the Clarkson's legacy! Power isn't important to you, Melvin. All you care about is your loving family, remember? The man who won the heart of the most beautiful girl in the world, Melvin Woods. We can still stop this from happening. You just need to wake up, Melvin. <laughs> York, you really are a second-rate man. You're incapable of understanding how other folks feel. Lena was the one I loved. Candy's merely the symbol we use to restore the Clarkson's glory. The goddess of fertility is just an idol designed to guide our people down the proper path. I devoted everything I had to Lena. Hey, Patricia! Ah. <whistles> <sighs> I was obsessed with Lena ever since I was a kid. She lived in a big mansion and also had skin as white as snow. All I ever wanted was to be just like her. My friends were too close-minded to understand. Don't let the white man brainwash you, they said. But race was never a part of it for me. She was always far above that shit. A higher being who surpassed it all. By the time I grew up, she already changed forms and abandoned her home. At first, I was so shocked. It felt like my dreams had been shattered before I ever got a chance to pursue them. But when I finally got a chance to meet her face to face, everything changed. I loved her female form with all my heart. The moment I saw her again, she completely possessed my soul. Hey, York. You know how they say God created man in his own image? That's what Lena is. She's God's finest creation. The perfection of the human race. She wasn't perfect in any way, Melvin. She was just another criminal who happened to be a bit smarter than most. <laughs> you never understand. Anywho. I decided to follow her plan. And so I became the one who supported her from the shadows, working to fulfill her dream of restoring the Clarkson's glory. That's why I seduced Candy, married her, and kept giving her San Rouge whenever Lena told me to. Then, you know what happened? About one year ago, we finally saw a sign. A sign of the birth of the goddess of fertility. You mean she started growing horribly obese? Eight years. It felt long, but also short somehow. I knew from the start that much blood would be spilled. But I had no other choice. It was the only way for me to make my beloved angel need me. So you murdered Galena too? Yeah. That didn't exactly go according to plan. Galena was supposed to kill Lise. And Lena was supposed to take Patricia's life. Then Lena and Galena were supposed to kill PJ and end their own lives. Filicide, patricide, and suicide. These three types of sacrifice were gonna complete the blood purge. But then you came to town. You're such a pest, York. I loathe every fabric of your being. Always buzzing around us like a gnat, trying to upset our faith, but no more. I'm going to stop you right here, sacrifice my daughter, and complete Lena's plan once and for all. There may have been some hiccups in the plan, but the result won't change. After all, I'm her daddy. In the end, the goddess of fertility and her king will be the only ones left. We'll find a way to make do on our own. Hey, 
Yo, haven't you been wondering why I'm talking so much about myself? Because this is the last stage of the game? And nope, I've just been waiting for this. The Bud. Soon, she'll be reborn, and the goddess of fertility will be among us. It all ends here! Are you all right? <sighs> Die! Stop, goddammit! Get away from her! Daddy! Mama! Get out of the way! But the goddess! Let us play as... Daddy! <laughs> no! Damn it! I was supposed to be the king! Need to stop the fire! Shit! Damn it! Patricia? If Mama and I die, it'll all end, right? I know about the real you. I know that my blood's cursed. So I'm just gonna die. I'm gonna die here with Mama, so it'll all stop. Just please, please run, Daddy. You're a good man, aren't you? I... I... Daddy, you saved me. Patty. Zack, I need you. Give me strength.
Are you all right? Agent York, save my daddy! Get out of here! York, take my CLG! And run! No! I can't leave both of you here! Just go! No! I'm not leaving! <laughs> no! I sinned. I, I can't come back to this world. We have to say goodbye here. I'll take your mama with me. It's time for you to start a new life, sweetie. One where you won't be shackled to your destiny. York. I've confessed my sins. I'm gonna die here. I know this isn't how you wanted things to go down, but she's innocent. My CLG is pure. Please, just take her and get out of here. No, no, I'm staying with you. My daughter's in your hands now, York. Let's go, Patty. No! Let me go! Daddy! Mama! No! <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, CLG. I've been a horrible father. Before we ever met, I was always heading down the wrong path. <laughs> but I finally understand it now. I love my family from the bottom of my heart. Both you and your mama. Me too. I love you with all my heart, Daddy. I'm sorry, Candy. it all up again. Your whole plan's been ruined. I'm sorry. Right up to the end. I, I could never do anything right. Oh. Really? So, it's all okay? Oh. Good. Well, just hold on then. Candy and I will be right there. The worst father, graced with the sweetest daughter. Life can be a bitch sometimes. <laughs> but it wasn't all bad.
now, I realized that at the very end, I saw him. She washed all that away, every last trace.